Good morning, I'm Joe Catalano with an AM Quincy news update for Tuesday, May 12th. There are now 1,030 cases of coronavirus in Quincy. There have been 93 deaths and 445 people have recovered. There are now over 78,000 cases statewide. Mayor Thomas Koch says the rate of infections in Quincy continues to drop from a high of 583% in mid-March to 17% today. He says the numbers prove that social distancing and other guidelines put in place to stop the spread of COVID-19 are working. The Quincy Walmart is open again after closing last Monday when a worker died of COVID-19. Quincy Health Commissioner Ruth Jones says so far a total of 32 workers have tested positive for the virus and will not be allowed to return to work. Jones says the store has been disinfected three times and has now put proper protocols in place for the safety of workers and customers. Sneeze guards are installed at all cash registers. One-way aisles have been implemented. There will be reduced capacity in the store and reduced hours from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. The elderly only may shop from 6 to 7 a.m. Employees will have their temperatures checked at the beginning of each shift. Jones says that she's still waiting for 30 test results to come back and that she'll be keeping a very close watch on the store to ensure that they are adhering to all social distancing guidelines. 69 year old Yen Li died from the coronavirus after working at that store for many years. Walmarts in Avon and Abington have also reopened after workers in those stores also tested positive for coronavirus. Almost 500 Quincy small business owners have applied for the Quincy Small Business Grant Program. As the deadline of this Friday approaches, the city is making grants of up to $10,000 available to some businesses with fewer than 20 employees and under a million dollars in gross annual revenue. The money is coming from the Community Development Block Grant Program and the Federal CARES Act in response to the current pandemic. Officials say they made the application process as easy as possible in an effort to help business owners apply quickly. Mayor Thomas Koch says the deadline may be extended and more money may be added to help additional businesses. The application is available on the city's website, quinzyma.gov. Squantum resident Arthur Mac McIntosh is now looking forward to his 101st birthday this week after recovering from COVID-19. The World War II veteran and two of his children say they have recovered from the coronavirus after contracting it last month. McIntosh's 52-year-old son, Chip, works in supply management at Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center in Boston and came down with the virus first. Chip's 72-year-old sister also came down with the disease. Both said they self-quarantined away from their father, who has pre-existing health conditions, but that he caught it anyway. Arthur recovered at home and was helped by other family and neighbors. He is the oldest living member of Boston Plumbers and Gas Fitters Union Local 12 and served in France during World War II. Even though we're still in the midst of the coronavirus pandemic, Quincy officials are already thinking about how to document the event for future generations. Officials have developed the Quincy COVID Memories Project in conjunction with the Thomas Crane Public Library, the Quincy 400, and us here at Quincy Access Television. People who live or work in Quincy are being asked to submit their photos, videos, audio, art, poems, or other reflections of how they are living through the crisis. Those submissions should represent what is most meaningful and relevant during this time. The Quincy COVID Memories website and digital archives will document, preserve, and share the experiences. Submissions can be uploaded through the website quincyculturalmemory.com or mailed to the Thomas Crane Public Library Attention Local History 40 Washington Street, Quincy, 02169. All submissions will be preserved as part of the community's historical record in the archives of the Thomas Crane Library for future generations. Any questions can be emailed to qulocalhistory at ocln.com. 
www.lcmi.org or by calling the library's information line at 617-376-1102. Quincy Public School students being given the opportunity to win cash prizes in an essay competition about the COVID-19 pandemic. Ward 3 counselor Ian Kane came up with the COVID-19 writing competition and area businesses and other supporters quickly raised $10,000 to be able to offer prizes of anywhere from $250 to $3,000 to the winners. Students in grades K through 12 can submit an essay of 500 words or less describing how the crisis has impacted their lives. There are categories for elementary, middle, and high school. The essays will be judged by the sponsors, and winners will be announced on June 5th. All of the essays will be cataloged in a special book to be preserved for local history. Just email your submissions to info at highpointgp.com by May 20th at 5 p.m. Quincy Police Department recognizing National Police Week this week. President John F. Kennedy established May 15th as National Police Officers Day back in 1962, and the week that it falls in is now National Police Week. This year, the Quincy Police Department is remembering Officer Patrick Kelleher, who died in 1908 after he was severely beaten by a mob at the Quincy Square train station. Officer Kelleher succumbed to his injuries four months after the attack. He was a Quincy police officer for four years and was survived by his wife. Reminder to please visit our newly redesigned website for the very latest information on the crisis as well as programming designed to inform and entertain you. In addition, you can now listen to and watch Quincy Access Television live right through our streaming service. Just go to QATV.org. I'm Joe Catalano with an AM Quincy News Update for Tuesday, May 12th.